friends, let's practice drawing because the more we paint, the better we get, the more we draw, the better we get, the more we create, the better we get. And I don't draw very often. I'm gonna probably be pretty rusty. So let's practice together. I dug out some of my drawing pencils and you can tell, look how new they look. <laughs> I don't draw much anymore. And then I have a pink pearl eraser. I think this was a magic. Oh, I think I have a newer one in here. Oh, this isn't the same brand. Um, I wanna say like magic white. Although it's not white anymore. And then this is a kneaded, kneaded eraser. I use these a lot for um, just sort of gently lightening up. Even when I uh, paint, I use chalk pastel and make it traceable. I use this to light up, lighten up the chalk pastel or the charcoal or whatever I'm using. So I thought we'd talk a little bit about a couple of the pencils we have and we draw a paint tube. So H means hard and I don't know why they have B for soft. Somebody out there might know, put it in the comments. So I thought we would scribble a little which you can't feel. Oh, I'm working on uh, mixed media paper. And then try and smear. So that's pretty hard and it's not smearing too much. This one's, so HB, it's, you know, in the middle of hard and soft. When I can feel it, which you can't. Mm, a little more smeary. And this is, so 2B, isn't 2B like the uh, yellow student pencils we all used to take tests in? This one, you can feel they're softer. Of course, I also might, oh, I don't have that much lead on my finger. I was gonna say you might, I might have a little lead buildup. And then this is, it should be really uh, soft. It's a 6B, it's a different brand. I don't know, oh, design. Oh gosh, I can even tell before I, hardly put any on. So if you want to smear more, you want a softer pencil. Um, and you don't have to have these. I just pulled them out because I had them and I thought that might be of interest. I don't know how much you guys know about pencils and lead and stuff. And then I used my handy little T-square, which I just love, and made a four by six inch box. And I just squared it up with the edge of the pad so it's not perfect because I'm thinking, I have a video on gridding, G-R-I-D-D-I-N-G, gridding, making a grid, because it'll help you size things. Um, you don't have to do it. I've been in art classes, gosh, especially in college. It'd be a huge still life setup. You pull out your big old pad and it's like, okay, draw. You know? <laughs> And sometimes there was zero instructions about how to look at things, how to maybe zoom in and make it more simple. It's kind of funny. I actually sometimes think I learned more in middle school and high school because I had an excellent art teacher than I did in the college classes. So I took a picture of a paint tube that was just sitting here on my art table. And I was thinking maybe we'd do this one because it has interesting shapes, it's bent, it has cracks. Um, but then I thought, well, we should start out more simple both for me because I don't draw much anymore um, and for you guys and then we don't necessarily have to do all the copy and the we're just gonna concentrate first on the paint tube but I took a photo so that we're both looking at the same thing but you could just draw what's right in front of you you could draw your coffee mug in a little sketchbook in the morning something like that just to you know have practice so and you could even measure oh I don't have one of those little Oh, um, drafting tools where it's like a pointer. You could take a pointer and little, literally measure distances. Um, there's an oil painter I watch on YouTube that does that. I'm like, oh, that works too. You know, he draws a little simple grid, so he has some guidelines. He, um, he doesn't draw from photo, he does a lot of plein air painting. So I'm gonna say, oh, that comes out about there. And if it doesn't come out just right, that's okay. So the whole point of drawing, besides it can be fun. Oh, and I'm just using, oh, it's a 0.7 millimeter paper made from an office supply store. Cause I thought 
more people would have that than the um, art pencils. I don't know if I mentioned that. Anyway, um, it's hard for me to talk and draw. <laughs> um, I don't remember what I was saying. It'll come back to me. So maybe we'll find this point too. Maybe about right there, you think? Oh, I don't know if you can hear Freckles meowing. She wants to come back in. I may uh, stop the video here. So draw light, and I would lighten up my guides too. But I figure you guys want to see it. And see, I think that went out a little too far. Ah, we'll just leave it until we figure out what we're doing here. Oh, and here's another thing you can do. Take your finger width as a measurement. You know, I don't know if you guys can picture like an artist holding their thumb up and using that to help scale thing and size things and get it on their canvases. And then if you want, you can draw around a little round something to get a circle. Um, there are circle templates you can buy, or we can just try and get one in there. So let's see how light and big this is. Got about a finger and a half. Oh, I actually had it about where we want it. And you can exaggerate some things, like I could bring that up and bring a little tip. Okay. So that's not quite a finger width. Let's just see it comes in there. And does that make sense? That does kind of make sense. That's about a finger width. Good old fingers. If you don't quite like how, like you want a little more angle to it, like I'm not quite liking this, even though we measured it, I might bring that out a little bit. You'll notice when artists sketch, they kind of will rework a line sometimes. And then once you get your drawing right, or your structure right, then you could transfer this onto a canvas and paint it. So if it was like an apple, or you, you could paint this. See, this comes down to about here, and it's got a curve. You see, it's like kind of from there to there. So one way, one way, you can help yourself with a curve. I'm gonna get my T-square. So we'll just say it curves about that much. Draw a little light line. So drawing isn't, and painting isn't magic. It's kind of taking your time and piecing things out. I wonder if I have this too skinny. I may have too much of an angle going. Let's. I kind of want to get. I'm going to stop talking here for a minute. Oh, I think that actually is going to work. And you can draw as much with a ruler or T-square as you want. I feel like my um, paint tube's a little skinny here. Oops. Eh, I think that's close enough. Okay, so that's gonna help me. So now I know where the top is, here's where the bottom is. This is gonna be pretty straight because it's a sturdy cap. And then we can just put in part of a curve and part of a curve. So that really helped. Here, let's put in a, so this curves a little bit, even though it's a blob. Let's put that in because that's pretty easy. And then you could just kind of indicate here. I'm gonna I'm gonna lighten up some of this because I don't need it so much anymore. Because we're starting to get to the, once you kind of get the structure down, then you get to the more fun part. Oops, I really didn't want this line up here either. And we could put 
just like little scribbles in for text. So probably straight is about here, how I photographed it. So things are gonna curve a little bit below this line and a little bit above this line. So below the line, they're gonna curve this way. Not that much, but I'm just exaggerating. And above the line, I don't see much curve because it's flatter, but it would curve a little bit this way if it had more paint in it. Oh, here we could write heavy body. And then this is definitely gonna have your own handwriting. Don't fight that. Don't like, well, my H isn't like her H or my E. Don't sweat that. You want it to look like your art. Oops, and I got it a little big. <laughs> let's put in, I don't know if we'll put in the whole label, but let's put in, and I'm gonna curve it a little bit more than it is here. So that's also the fun thing about art is you can make it a little bit better a little bit more interesting. This actually weighs because it dips. Can you see that? It goes up a little, goes down a little, goes up a little because there's not hardly any paint right there. So it goes down a little. Oh, but I might have gotten a little too skinny. Goes up a little. And then what you can start doing is adding, I'm gonna do quick because we don't want this to be too long of a video, but that's sort of like cross hatching. You don't have to, or you could blend it and smear it like we did here. There's all kinds of fun things you can do. And then you can add like a darker line here. And then really there's kind of a space if you wanna get it in there. It's not this exaggerated. And then there's like little teeny lines. And what I'm gonna do is just fade them out where the light is. So then, you know, you, you are actually, the light's coming from this way. Um, most of my paintings, I just do it this way because I license my art. And so it's just easier if I kind of do it the same all the time when I put the images together. I'm just rounding that out a little bit. Yeah, that's too little, isn't it? Even if we put it like side by side, I think it needed to come down. I'm just going to round a little bit more so we get more of a sense of fullness. It's pretty straight here. I think that's kind of fun. And that's, a, I think I said that, but that's what's fun about art is you can make it better than a photograph. And if you wanted to, you could try to get the logo in there. I don't know that I'm gonna. I might just kind of hint at it. Like that. And then we color this in dark. Okay, so now I don't know how far to go, how much you guys want to see. Oh, I forgot the professional. It's already starting to come together and look fun. And then so with this dark area, I would make it dark over here and then lighter. Oops, I kind of scribbled in my G there. I would make it lighter over here even though it isn't. And that's some of the tips and tricks of drawing and painting just to, you can always make it darker but it gives it more volume. You know, if we put in a little shadow here that's where a, you might like a soft pencil because you could totally blur it. Oh, that blurred pretty well. And then, this is what I like about these if you're a drawer. I got into these when I, because as a kid, I always drew. I never really liked painting. I started painting, gosh, I'll just say six years ago. Um, I started licensing my art. I started doing those kinds of things, but you can just lighten it back up and get your highlight back. Okay, what else do we want to do? Should we do the shadow maybe? Quick. So this would be dark in here, wouldn't it? And then the shadow's kind of wonky. 
But the shadow could be one of the more fun things because it, you're, you don't have to get this perfect. And it's gonna bend a little more. Let's see how far, it goes about halfway. Let's give us a spot to aim at. So just draw everyday objects, only if you want to. There are as many ways to learn to paint, draw, you know, chalk pastels, combination of everything, whatever your medium, watercolor, whatever medium you like to use. Uh, you can start with painting first. You do not have to start with drawing. Every person who creates starts at a different place. And that's part of what makes it fun and interesting. Oh, so here's something I don't know if we'll get into, but can you see how it's lighter right here? And it's actually darker right here and then dark, even darker on the edge. That's a little bit of reflective light. So that's where drawing can sometimes it will slow you down more than painting and help you see, just become a better observer. And the better observer you are, the better artist you are, I think. Keep in mind, these are all my opinions. I would love to hear your opinions. I would love to hear your opinions. So what we're gonna do, I just lighten that up a little bit too much. Let's put in a little bit of the shadow since I pointed out reflective light. So in the beginning, I think it's good to sort of learn realism as an artist because then you can always loosen up and uh, go more impressionistic, looser, you know, but if you understand the structure, even an impressionistic painting needs some structure. Okay, so I'm just going a little lighter. And then, oh, my computer just dinged. I don't know if you guys heard that. So cross hatching is also like, if you go like this here, I could just do that. Put a little, they go back and forth. forth. And let's put a little darker. And so you can work it and work it and work it. Another thing, um, working with pencil, you have a clean piece of paper so that you're not dragging your hand across the graphite. But there, I've got a little reflective light going right here. Okay, guys, I think I'm gonna stop because I think you get the idea. Have fun. You know, I, I'm starting to have fun now, so now I don't wanna stop. <laughs> But that, you know, those lines are not by any stretch of the imagination perfect. But it's starting to look like a paint tube. Okay, I hope you like this. I hope this helped. Um, I think if you practice drawing and you're a beginner painter, it will speed up your progress. Um, but it's definitely, definitely not something you have to do. I really appreciate you guys spending your time with me. Let me know if you like the art tip videos. I've got a handful of, of them on YouTube. I really hope they help. I've got a cloud video that's doing pretty well. It uses different tubes and how to paint, or tubes, different tools and how to paint clouds. So I think that one is one that people are liking. I really appreciate your comments that help support my channel, the shares, the likes. It means so much to me. People are sending money to support the channel, I can't, I I am just, I'm amazed. I really, really appreciate it. Great big happy art hugs, and I hope to chat with you guys soon. Bye.